You know him, you hate him, and you love to hate him. But you all know who Christopher Columbus is and what he did. The man who became the first European in more than 400 years to set foot in the Americas. Christopher Columbus may have been a genocidal colonizer, but his impact on history cannot be matched. If not for his bold plan to cross the Atlantic and discover a new route to Asia, then who knows when the old and new worlds would become joined together as one. While the name Columbus is known throughout the wide world, did you know that there is another Columbus, overshadowed but equally as impactful as Christopher, his brother, Bartholomew Columbus. This is his story. Bartholomew Columbus was born in 1461 in the Republic of Genoa, modern-day Italy. He was square in the middle of five siblings, the eldest being Christopher and the youngest being his only sister, named Bianchinita. Their father, Domencino Columbus, scraped out a living as a wool weaver, whilst his mother Susanna ran a cheese stand in the local marketplace. The Columbuses were by no means wealthy, nor would they endure much poverty, being part of the working class of Genoa. In 1465, the four-year-old Bartholomew would bid farewell to his oldest brother Christopher. The ambitious 14-year-old decided to start his career on the seas, joining one of the many merchant vessels in Genoa. In 1470, the Columbus family moved a few miles away to the city of Savona. This venture would see the family patriarch, Domencino the wool weaver, purchase and operate a tavern. This coastal tavern is probably where Bartholomew heard some great stories about faraway nautical adventures, such as the likes of the Genoan-born Vivaldi brothers and Lancelotto Malicello, who had ventured past the Pillars of Hercules and into the great unknown of the Atlantic Ocean. In 1477, when Bartholomew was only 16, he left home in search of his calling. Where Christopher had become a sailor, Bartholomew would become a map maker. He had somehow gained an apprenticeship in the country at the heart of the age of exploration, Portugal. More specifically, Bartholomew would learn the skills to become a cartographer in the capital city of Lisbon. Shortly after his arrival in Lisbon, a familiar face would come to greet him his brother, Christopher Columbus. The reason Portugal was exploring so much in the 15th century is because they wanted a direct route to get to the rich resources of Asia. Blocking the path of Portugal, and most of Western Europe for that matter, was the merchant republics of Venice and the Columbus hometown of Genoa. These two republics on opposite sides of Italy became wealthy by purchasing goods from Alexandria and Istanbul, only to resell the goods at a heavily marked up price to other Europeans. While Portuguese explorers, such as Henry the Navigator and Bartholomew Diaz, thought that the best way to get to the rich markets of Asia was to sail around Africa, the Columbus brothers had a much quicker route in mind. With the calculations given credit to Christopher Columbus, which was more likely a design based on his cartographer younger brother, Bartholomew, guessed that Asia was across the Atlantic Ocean and only about 3,000 miles west of Portugal. This theory the Columbus brothers called the Enterprise of the Indies. The only way to find out if these calculations were correct was to see for themselves. There was only one problem. The Columbus brothers had nowhere near the financial means to support such a journey. They both pushed their lucrative idea to the side. Christopher looked to gain more experience sailing around the Atlantic Ocean, working as a Portuguese trader, while Bartholomew went back to his work as a cartographer. By the latter half of the 1480s, both brothers felt that they had enough sailing and map-making experience to start looking for sponsors for their enterprise of the Indies. Christopher first went to the Portuguese king, John II, attempting to convince him to fund his expedition. He rejected the Genoan captain on two separate occasions. With that, Christopher took his ideas next door to the king and queen of Castile and Aragon, Ferdinand and Isabella. While they rejected his proposal to monetarily support the enterprise, they did bribe Christopher to not take his ideas elsewhere, in case he was somehow correct in his assumption. Christopher agreed not to spread his plan to any other European monarch, but no such deal was made on behalf of Bartholomew. Bartholomew Columbus then started a journey north, hoping to find a sponsorship in France or England. He first made course to the court of King Henry VII in London, 
While sailing across the Bay of Biscay between France and Spain, Bartholomew's ship was overrun by pirates, either from the Barbary coast or Brittany. Bartholomew was taken hostage along with his crew. For the next year, he would be a prisoner aboard this pirate ship. It's unclear how he was saved, but he somehow escaped the pirates by 1491. Maybe he told them about his enterprise, promising a fresh land to plunder. Perhaps the pirates themselves were hunted down by an English vessel. Or perhaps Bartholomew simply threw himself off the boat and swam the distance to England. Either way, a downtrodden and probably malnourished Bartholomew Columbus arrived at the court of King Henry VII in 1491. Likely having lost his prized maps that showed Asia within sailing distance of Europe, Bartholomew presented his project to the king. He was rejected, the peculiar outsider having made a fool of himself. After this rejection, Bartholomew sailed across the English Channel, this time not being caught by pirates, and arriving in France in early 1492. Here, he went to Paris to hopefully find a more willing King Charles VIII to accept his proposal. Nothing of the sort would occur, as Bartholomew's plan was rejected by the French monarch. However, by this point in 1492, Christopher Columbus had already secured a sponsor for the Enterprise of the Indies, in the form of the Spanish crown. On August 3rd of 1492, he left Spain for the Canary Islands, and from there, he would make the journey across the uncharted Atlantic. As we all know, he was unsuccessful in finding Asia, but did make landfall in the Caribbean islands and became the first European to set foot in North America in 400 years. He returned to Spain in March of 1493, fully convinced that he and his brother's assumptions of Asia being just across the Atlantic were now fact. Bartholomew was still in France when he heard the news of his brother's return. He went back to Spain in haste. By the time Bartholomew made it back to Spain, he was already too late. Christopher Columbus had abandoned his brother again to sail across the Atlantic. This joint venture was turning more into Christopher's adventure alone. The monarchs of Spain decided to reward Bartholomew's hard work. After all, he was probably the one to produce the maps that Christopher used to convince them. They gave Bartholomew the money to purchase supplies and a boat to make his journey across the Atlantic. After a month-long journey, the crew of Bartholomew makes landfall on the island of Hispaniola in 1494. Shortly after, they find Christopher Columbus and his crew of marauding conquistadors. After five years apart, the brothers are reunited, probably regaling stories of their adventures in that time. It's probably here that Bartholomew discovers that his brother had named an island in honor of his absent brother, St. Bartholomew, just east of Puerto Rico. On top of this, Christopher, who is now an admiral and governor of any new lands he could conquer, promoted Bartholomew as his second-in-command, an acting governor in his eventual absence. The crew of Bartholomew joins Christopher in his second voyage around the Caribbean, traveling around Hispaniola, Cuba, and Jamaica, leaving bloodshed wherever they went in search of gold and slaves they could sell in Europe. This lasts for two years before Christopher sets course on his return journey to Spain in 1496, leaving Bartholomew to subjugate the island of Hispaniola until his return. After a year of fighting and enslaving the native Taino people on the island, Bartholomew founds a new settlement on the southern coast of Hispaniola. It would become the first European city in the Americas and would eventually become the capital of the Dominican Republic. The city of Santo Domingo. In 1498, Christopher Columbus started his third voyage to the New World, bringing with him another brother, Diego, this time sailing more south until reaching mainland South America, along with the island of Trinidad. After this excursion, he returned to Hispaniola and was again reunited with Bartholomew. By this point, some of the Spanish explorers, who were promised unending riches from the Columbus brothers, became disgruntled with their allowance and began to revolt. The Columbuses harshly put down this mutiny, hanging several men. To prevent the rebellion of the rest of their men, they started to sell even more Taino slaves to replace the abundant gold that Christopher had promised them. News of this harshly put down rebellion 
spread with a stream of slaves across the Atlantic. When Ferdinand and Isabella heard about the cruelties of the Columbus brothers and their brutal subjugation of the Taino people instead of their conversion, they sent out for their arrest, entrusting a knight named Francisco de Bobadilla to investigate the accusations. The most excellent Francisco de Bobadilla arrived in Santo Domingo in 1499, where he arrested Diego Columbus. Christopher and Bartholomew were elsewhere in Hispaniola, going on another bloody conquest of the Taino people when they were ordered back to Santo Domingo by Bobadilla. Here he arrested the two brothers and sent them back to Spain for trial. In their absence, Francisco de Bobadilla was made the far less genocidal governor of the newly conquered Caribbean islands. In late 1500, the three Columbus brothers arrived in Spain, their wrists clanking with chains as they were in prison for six weeks. In 1501, they were summoned to meet Isabella and Ferdinand for their misconduct. Christopher apologized and pleaded with the monarchs, even bringing himself to tears. He felt it was unfair that he had just enriched the Spanish crown immensely, only to be betrayed for being too brutal of a tyrant. After a further investigation, the three brothers were acquitted of their charges in the summer of 1501, despite being guilty and nearly all claims leveled against them. Christopher would never be allowed as the governor of the West Indies again, but he was allowed to keep his rank as admiral. In 1502, the Spanish crown agreed to fund a final voyage of the Columbus brothers, giving them a strict goal, discover the rich markets of China and India. In March of 1502, the three Columbus brothers left Spain and arrived on the island of Martinique a month later. From here, they sailed around the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Jamaica, until reaching the western tip of Cuba. The brothers then made a gamble that the Straits of Malacca would be due south of here, and set course to finally find the Spice Island markets of Indonesia. On their way, the Columbus brothers encounter a large canoe sailing the waters near the Yucatan Peninsula. The men inside the canoe are described as being well-dressed and carrying a large cargo. Bartholomew goes out to investigate these never-before-seen people. In typical European fashion, he loots their valuables and takes an old man hostage. Bartholomew had no way of knowing, but he had likely just become the first European to meet the Mayans, this canoe being one of their many trading vessels. From here, the brothers ventured down the coast of Central America until reaching Panama in 1503. Here they found a settlement at the mouth of the Balian River. Christopher Columbus decides to go back to Spain, leaving Bartholomew in charge of the settlement and 80 fighting men. The arrival of these white and bearded foreigners alerts the local tribes. A chief among them, named Uraka, brings many of these tribes together under his leadership. He meets with the foreigners and instructs them not to venture past a certain point in the Balian River. The Europeans, unsurprisingly, completely disregard this demand and do so anyways. Sensing an impending conflict, Bartholomew captures Uraka and his family, holding them as a hostage on his ship stationed in the Baleen River. Hoping to come to some sort of compromise the Spanish would inevitably break, they start to negotiate with Uraka. The Panamanian chief is having none of it, and only makes outbursts at Bartholomew. Seeing that Uraka will not bend the knee to the conquistadors, Bartholomew orders his men to throw Uraka into the river while his hands and legs were still tied together. For the better part of a year, Bartholomew and his settlement in Panama meet no opposition as they explore for gold and subjugate the nearby land. That is, until Uraka emerged from his watery grave. The Panamanian chief somehow managed to survive being tied up and thrown into the river. Now, he was out for blood. He attacked Bartholomew's settlement with a few thousand native warriors. The 80 men held their ground for a time before retreating to their ship. During this flight, Bartholomew is wounded and is helped onto the boat by his men. Once the Spanish all board, Bartholomew orders that the short-lived settlement in Panama be abandoned and that his men return to Spain. The defeated Bartholomew returns to the Iberian Peninsula by 1505, where he is greeted by a sickly brother, 
Christopher. Christopher Columbus lingers on for another year before dying in 1506, thereby ending the tale of one of the most brutal conquistadors in history. Bartholomew remained in Spain for a time, even welcoming his first and only child named Maria in 1508. In that same year, Bartholomew's services and experience in the West Indies would be called upon again. This time, not by the Spanish crown directly, but by his nephew and the son of Christopher Columbus, Diego Columbus. While Christopher was stripped of his title of governor of the West Indies and barred from ever holding that title again, his son Diego had no such restrictions. Hoping to find better luck with Diego, King Ferdinand II grants the governorship to him. In 1509, Diego, along with his uncle Bartholomew, leaves Spain for Santo Domingo. They arrive in the city, where Diego formally settles into his role as governor. Bartholomew likely acted as an advisor. After all, he probably knew more about the West Indies than anyone else did at this point in time. Bartholomew remained in this role for two years, until he was forced back to Spain in 1411. The reason for his return regarded his ownership of Mona Island to the west of Puerto Rico. Bartholomew had owned the island for the past decade and planned to keep this strip of Caribbean paradise in the family. The king of Spain, Ferdinand II, saw this as an opportunity. Bartholomew had no sons and only a bastard daughter, meaning that the inheritance of the island would not be a direct succession. Bartholomew was then forced to give Mona Island up to the king upon his eventual death, although he would retain ownership in his lifetime. With this island debate settled, Bartholomew returned to Santo Domingo in 1512. Here he lived in the city that he had founded for the next two years, seeing how much the city had grown from its initial founding as a fort to becoming America's largest settlement of Europeans. Bartholomew died in 1514 at the age of 54 his cause of death being unknown. Bartholomew Columbus, the overshadowed younger brother of the significantly more famous and hated Christopher Columbus, does not get enough credit in regard to the discovery of the New World. He was likely the one who made the maps and incorrect calculations that Asia was only 3,000 miles across the Atlantic, seeing as he was a professionally trained cartographer. He may have been just as much as a bloodthirsty conquistador as his older brother, but that should not disqualify his name from being taught alongside his brother in the discovery of the New World.